Hi, I'm Bob Nystrom. Hi, this is Bo Deedle. Hey, this is Rich Big Daddy Salgado. Hi, this is Doc Gooding. You're watching Sports Biz. Sports Biz. Sports Biz with LD. Sports fans, this is Sports Biz with LD. Welcome to Sports Biz with LD. I'm your host, Larry Davis, brought to you by the Rampart Insurance Group for all your insurance needs, rampartinsurance.com. A1 VIP Entertainment for all your ticket needs and VIP needs. That means get behind the scenes, meet the athletes, and or meet the celebrities. VIPentertainment.com. 388 Restaurant and Lounge. 388 Willis Avenue, Roslyn, New York. And Easy Porn. P-A-W-N, locations, 14 locations throughout New York City area. If you need money and you need to pawn something, Easy Pawn is the place. You can find me on my website, sportsbizwithld.com. You can tweet me at sportsbizwithld. And, of course, go to the website, sportsbizwithld.com. An honor, and I know he'll say it's not an honor, but a guy I read every day, love his column, agree or not agree, the great Phil Munchnik from New York Post. Phil, how you doing, buddy? Good afternoon, Larry. Agree. Agree. <laughs> disagree. You know, Phil, it took I, so long. I agree. You agree, but, disagree? I mean, you might be a judge or an attorney now I with agree with no one. What was the Marx Brothers movie sang that song, Whatever It Is, I'm Against It. <laughs> Ever from the moment they commenced it, I'm Against It. That's it for me. That's it? It's only your singing yep. career? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it took a while to get you back on the show. And, of course, there's so much to talk about, you know. And I'm like you. I watch the shows. I listen to the radio. And I'm critiquing it along the way. And, you know, we can jump right into it. Wait, you know, I'm a, I got to interrupt. I don't, I don't listen to critique. I listen as a sports fan. I listen as a sports fan. I'm turning it on to try uh, uh, for my leisure, for my entertainment value that, that I'm... Uh, 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 you know, ostensibly a media critic is ancillary to me, I, but almost invariably something strikes me, good, bad, and in between, and as long as I'm listening, I may as well write about it, but I, I, I'm, I was first and foremost, and hope to remain, although it's becoming increasingly difficult, a sports fan. That's, that's where it's at. It's not, I'm, I, listen, I don't know what, you know, what plug goes into, the, I can't walk into a, uh, a broadcast truck. And press the right button. I can't even use our toaster. I don't even know how to use our toaster, so how can I do that? <laughs> well, but you're classified. You know, they, they classify guys like you and Raisman as critics, so I guess you got to go with it. Classified, branded, labeled. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get right into it because. I, I like you. I, I watch the stuff, you know. Like I'll watch ESPN them do the top ten, and I'll see all the graphics on the bottom, and I don't even get to see the play, or I don't even get to see like if it's golf. <laughs> isn't that great? Right? Isn't that great? What's that? About twenty-five years of that. You don't think there's a quality control guy? So you know when the putt goes in, the putt normally goes in where the hole in one is aced at the bottom of the screen. Why not move the the, the uh, video up? Or remove the bottom line uh, scroll. But nah. Then there's the one where you're watching first thing in the morning because you didn't watch the game, and there's the final score along the bottom. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> How would you like to be an advertiser? <laughs> Done. Good night. Yeah, work. really. Did, did anyone see my advertising? Like, what did I waste my money for? Right. Uh, another one that you've written about, which I love, and I saw it again in your column, The Hold... And the save. Mm. Right. The yeah. hold, the guy will go two-thirds of an inning, he'll have three hits, two runs, uh, a base on ball, but he gets a hold. It's a great stat. Well, it's sort of like saying, you know, if somebody came into your house and didn't murder you, they, were, they did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> now, if they murdered you, you might get a blown save. But they, you know, they, they, you know, they, they didn't... They didn't break any china. Now they get a hold. It's absurd. It's absurd. I don't know why we need this. Fox has actually put holds up in the postseason. Um, yeah, yeah, I saw that. Now what, what, 
does that tell you? What does that tell you about the executive producer or the or the line producer who's looking at this stuff and says, yes, let's put this up to a national audience? That guy can't explain what a hold is. And he's giving to us as, as, as a matter of insight. It's absurd. Who was the guy, Joba Chamberlain, had a hold the other day? <laughs> he was the Tigers. It was 8.80 or 8.8. No, it was 80. It was 80 for the day. But they're giving us holes. And they're giving us holes. I mean, another great and stat. A save, a save rewards anything from a job perfectly well done to arson. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Hey, could we ever, do you think Phil will ever have somebody, let's use Carmelo as an example, to go up to the podium and they say, why'd you become or why'd you stay in New York, Nick? Can he just say, I did it for the money? What is wrong with that? I remember when Andy Pettit uh, left the Yanks to go back to Houston, Houston, Texas, and he said, you know, I wanted to be close to my family. And then he came back to the Yankees and said, what'd you be? Are you sick of your family? <laughs> what happened down there? <laughs> well, maybe they have a summer home. <laughs> I asked like... Carmelo, what made you think to cover your entire body with ink if it doesn't wash off? What What made you do that? What made you go with that? That stuff blows my mind. I would think it, the question would like be, the, I would think the question would be, is there any spot left on your body to put more in? Yeah, there might be something on his back to space the lease. <laughs> what is your um? It's, it's all, you know, and it's colorful. And from what I understand, it's expensive. Yeah. And it's painful. <laughs> it is painful. It's they say. It's mutilation. It's self mutilation. You. Why do you want to? You know. I don't know. Then what? you get older, it starts to shrivel up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> what about like? When they have, um, you know, the guy hits a home run, and instead of showing the guy and the home run and all that stuff, they start showing me everybody in the stands. I mean, what do I care about these people in the stands if the guy hits a big home run? Uh, well, first they show the guy posing, and then they, they show you him posing in slow motion. And then if he beats his chest, they show it to you in slow motion, super slow, before they go to commercial. And <laughs> then they show everybody in the stands. And it could be file footage. What are people, especially if it's a home game, what are people in the stands doing? They're cheering. As they should. Right. But I don't even understand, I don't even understand marketing. The, the, the one thing you want your fans to do is to applaud, right? It makes noise. I'm doing it now. Doesn't that make noise? Yes. yes. Do you, do they walk in on a big game when you hand them a towel to wave. If you can't applaud anymore, <laughs> you can't wave the <laughs> <this> towel. <laughs> Stick it in your mouth. They can't make any noise. You know, another thing I want to get your take on, because I've read about it the whole season. You know, tell us what you really feel about the Derek Jeter farewell, let's make as much money as I can Steiner Sports Tour. How do you feel about that? Um, I think it really... See, we, we really didn't know Jeter. He was very, very protective of, of his image. Well, unless there was a nickel to be made. And um, we didn't know... We knew he was a great shortstop. Very clutch player, very intelligent player, but we kept, we we're always told how classy he is without any real evidence. We knew he was a good ball player, yeah. You know, it reminded me of Tiger Woods. We were told that in addition to Tiger Woods being the greatest golfer in the world, he's the greatest human being in the world. Yeah. The greatest father, the greatest son, the greatest husband, the greatest human. And you know, what was, where was the evidence of that? It made no difference. In, in Cheater's case, in Cheater's case, there was, it, there was an element to that. That how could he be classy if he was selling his boogers? I, you know, it, it 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 just seemed like where does this end? Where does this end? How did he? You know, you're selling your socks, right? You, you, you're selling everything, and it, it was bothersome. I think it took a lot of bloom off the rose. I mean, and. Even when, 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 you know, there was he and Bob Shepard, we, we read the stuff, we heard it every day, it was supposed to be so close. Then he, he didn't even go to the guy's funeral. They were off that day, and he was uh, he said, well, nobody told me about it. Well, you're a big boy, why don't you go and ask about it? Get a limo, go to the funeral. That's a good point. I, there, was just, there was just, there was just, I'm 
not saying I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I'm just saying that it was there was a pervasive element of greed throughout this season, and then the, the nonsense that came from broadcasts and the uh, other media outlets about how he hates all this attention and it. Well, he saw what happened with Mariano Rivera last year. Apparently, he knew what was coming. He, he, you know, it, 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 if we were asked to suspend common sense, we were asked to don't believe what we see, believe what we're told. Me, I'm going to believe what I see. Right, I believe what I see, and you know unless what I, I tell, Unless I tell you, then you believe what you heard. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I look at the Derek tour, and I get it. They're trying to sell everything, and for Derek, oh, you know, everything goes through his charity. And I got to tell you. Now, uh, where, where, where'd you get that charity thing? Oh, his Turn 2 Foundation, you mean? Yeah. That yeah. stuff, the, the Steiner. Yankees uh, Jeter thing was not a uh, charitable thing. It may have been used as a defense mechanism for some of its elements, but it was a strict profit thing. It was uh, shared by the Yanks, uh, Jeter, and, Ste and Steiner. Now, if you're paying um, $450 for a pair of socks, I'm going to make out the check, not to Steiner. I'm going to make the check out to the charity. I'll take the write-off. Not Jeter. Hmm. You know, that's a good point because I would think that would happen is at the end, the cut that Derek would get, he would get it to his charity and that's how he yeah, would... And, yeah, and again, whatever he's going to donate to his charity, he's going to get that right off. All the benefits line up for him, all the financial benefits, but I think as it relates to... You know, I've heard from many, many Yankee fans, big Jeter fans, who are really turned off by this season, just terribly turned off to the point where they were disgusted. And again, I, I think that I think uh, some of the cat jumped out of the, this bag on this one, and it's a shame because what is it in the end? It's just money. <laughs> Well, and it's a shame in the end because the amount of money, you know, is really, mean, uh, you know, minimal and compared to all the money the Yankees make and all the money Derek makes. So from that angle, I agree with at, you. If you look at who's going to buy this stuff, it's expensive. So you're going to get rich knucklehead or you're going to get poor knuckleheads who think this stuff has some intrinsic value. And, you know, it, it, people with common sense would avoid this stuff. So who are your, who are your primary target marketplace it's morons <laughs> and you're looking to exploit morons that suck every nickel out of their pocket I, it just doesn't strike me as something that I, I i'd like to say i'd never do it so i'm gonna say it i'd never do it well you say what, you what, never what else do i have you know like who else do i have to be self-righteous about i gotta be righteous about myself i don't know you i don't know derek I, you know I think what would happen, though, a lot of that happened too, Phil, is a good example is if your son or daughter came up and said, I want it, and then as a parent, you're going to say to yourself, you know something, you change your thought process, you might buy it for him. That's what happens a lot. Well, I would say to my son or daughter, if you want an autograph from someone, make sure that there's no strings attached, that they're doing it because you admire that person, and he appreciates or she appreciates that. And in exchange for that, you're going to... Uh, receive the autograph and you're going to thank that person and there's absolutely there's no benefit other than emotional and there's no there's no transaction right and there should be no I transaction I couldn't pay for an autograph I couldn't pay for an autograph I just couldn't do it yeah, I see your point. You know, let's change gears and get to your thought process on the ESPN hires. You know, how ESPN continues to hire the kind of people that, you know, when they end up doing something bad, they want to suspend them. But when they hired them, that's the kind of stuff they were doing. Um, that too, Larry, has reached a point where any time a guy gets in, in deep trouble, uh, let's say Ray Rice, let's say Adrian Peterson, Hardy on the Jaguars or the Panthers, I think it was taking place for um, It's reached a point where readership invariably writes his help. He's going to ESPN. That's perfect for ESPN. That's where you, you know, it, it has become ESPN through its own devices and own wishes has become synonymous with hiring the worst acts in sports to serve as its, uh, its, as its opinion shapers, as its spokespeople, as its representatives. Uh, they just hired uh, Calhoun from the old UConn coach. The guy left a legacy, 20 some odd years of just, of winning, sure, but at what cost? Over 20 arrests, academic fraud, thefts, um, all kinds of ugly stuff, um, illegal recruiting. Now, he's not the guy I want for 
my for my network. But if you look at ESPN's roster over 20 years, actually since Disney bought it, of all things, since Disney bought ESPN, it's littered, it, it's inundated with bad guys. Um, even, you know, personally I liked him, but professionally I knew what he was. <laughs> Excuse me, even Jim Valvano was available because he was essentially tossed out of coaching for cheating. Right. He, and, and, and now he's there, he, posthumously, he's their figurehead. Right, like the way they hired Bruce Pearl. Bruce Pearl, yeah. Bruce, you know, it was, a, it, was a, uh, it was a waiting station, a bus stop, a waiting room between gigs. While his sanctions, he would have had two years where he wasn't allowed to coach because he was such a crook and he lied. Well, maybe that's the audition. They're auditioning for ESPN, so that's what they do. <laughs> yeah, well, but, you know, all signals were off after, after Ray Lewis. I mean, they were, they were knocking Ray Lewis's door down to hire him. They didn't even know if he could communicate, which he barely can. Right, they it didn't, didn't matter. Care. Right, it didn't matter. He was the big bad guy in the NFL. He might have been the big bad guy on the street in, in Atlanta, too, with two guys with knife to death. But that, that didn't bother them. Well, that didn't bother them. Of course not. Well, why should... Then he's commenting on the other guys. I mean, how funny is that? Yeah, and, no, yeah. He's yeah. passing judgment. He's passing and judgment on... I, gotta, right. I, gotta, I, I need to be preached to, but, but now all the networks are doing it. I don't need to be told right from wrong by Warren Sapp. I don't need that. Charles Barkley. <laughs> sure, he's charming and everything. Why does he still have a job? Could you survive, given his history? Let's oh, say wow. I was smoking pot at two in the morning, but I was drunk. And I was with a hooker. All right, you get uh, you get two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks paid. <laughs> you get two weeks. And then your other take on you, you love to write about the boomer. You got the weekday boomer Esiason, and you got the weekend boomer Esiason. Yeah, that's a shame. That's a shame yeah. because he seems to be. One of them's a phony. <laughs> the guy goes on CBS studio and he speaks from up on high and passes judgment as it relates to the comportment of players and right from wrong. And then the guy who goes uh, weekday boomer goes on FAN and, and, and is crude and low and, uh, you know, makes fun of the impaired, which is mind blowing. Um, now, which one is the real one? Or are they both phonies? Who knows? I mean, you know, you know nobody, nobody wants to be known, everybody wants to be known for class when, it suits, when it, it suits their needs. No one wants to be known for class all the time or honesty all the time. Yeah, you know, and if you think about it, the morning show on FAN, Phil, I don't really think it matters who would be on that show. And it's no disrespect to those guys. People are going to listen. You're going to have millions of listeners no matter who you have doing that show. So I don't know why they even have to go there. If it's a mold, if it's a pattern, if it's a demographic, that right. the morning drive has to be crazy. It's got to be crude, lewd, rude. And the idea that anything else could be entertaining, like clever can't be entertaining, but to say boobs, that's our hot chick, that's entertaining. And... It's a shame, too, because there's some very entertaining people out there who keep it clean. Um, Craig Carton's not a, a stupid guy. He can be a very funny guy, but he's compelled. It's, it, it's, a, it's an unwritten term of engagement to go for the crotch. And, uh, and that's a shame. He knows it. He knows the score. And let's, let's not forget, who, who, who did, who did uh, Carton and Esaias replace? Don Imus. Don Imus, and then, right. So they yep. were so upset by, by Imus' behavior on the air that they went out and hired two more shock jocks. Or one shock jock and one guy who they turned into one. Right, because Carton oh. was a shock jock, and that's, but that's yeah. how he got the job. Yeah, Carton used to be on a radio show down here in uh, Central Jersey where he, he trashed everybody and, you know, defamed people. And again, look at the job. Know, look what he got him. He's, he's actually, you know, if, if, if you spoke like that in front of his children, he'd have a fit. But he'll do it to your children. You know, because that's part of the gig. That's part of the job. But the argument would be, you know, your children don't have to I listen. Have to hear from, wait, 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 this is an all-sports station in New York. 
Why do I have to hear from people that they can't listen to it with their kids in the car? A sports station. Right. Isn't that sad? Isn't that pathetic? Right. What happened to sports? I thought it was supposed to be for the whole family. Well, I'm writing it for Sunday. It used to be, and I know, because I was a pain in the ass kid. I was not a nice kid. I would cheat and lie. No way. I don't believe oh, that. Yeah. I, no. was, I was a fool. I was a terror. I was headed for, you know, my parents, uh, and they weren't far off. It's only I was headed for prison. But I can tell you empirically that sports helped turn me, turn a, a rotten kid into a better kid. Not a good kid, <laughs> into a better kid. They really did, especially team sports. I can tell you now, and I'll argue the point forever, that, that sports today has a better chance to turn a good kid into a creep. That's sad to all say. Props, I think you're right. With all the props they get, TV, radio, everybody standing there posing and preening. I mean, last night, Jeff Cumberland, there, it's what, five minutes left in the game. He's just scored a touchdown. He caught a touchdown pass, tight end for the Jets. Scores a touchdown pass, uh, catches a touchdown. And the first thing, now they're down eight. Now they're down two. So they're going to line up. They're going to go for two, most likely. And the first and only thing going through his head is I'm going to do a dance of self aggrandizement. I am going to wiggle my butt and, and pound my chest and show everybody how cool I am. Now, who really thinks he's cool? Not, he does. <laughs> only Jeff <laughs> Cumberland. But where, where is the coach that stops this? Nowhere. Well, let's go I to mean, that. You, you know, get a Rex Ryan. Get a Rex Ryan. And go, well, he's a player's coach. Well, that's, that's, how about being the team coach? What about the players? The players compose a team. Well, that's that. Do you look at Rex Ryan? Let's jump to Rex for a while. I mean, look at Rex. I mean, I don't believe anything yeah. Rex says. You never he's could not believe an easy it. Guy to root for. Well, I guess he can, can be if you like, you know, if you're playing golf with him or if you're in a bar with him, he might be an easy guy to root for. But as it relates to, um, you know, operating a football team and, and, and charging people eighty thousand dollars for tickets, huh. <laughs> no. is he still? No. Is Rex still saying he's not going to kiss Belichick's rings as he continues to not be able to beat him? I don't. You got to love, you know, to switch, you know, talking baseball. You got to love you got Kansas City Royals in the playoffs, right? Isn't that a great story? Yeah, they're easy to root for. They're easy to root for. Until you see Lorenzo Kane with two outs. <laughs> 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 Chalking the second while the ball's bouncing away. Yeah, they're pretty easy to root for. Yeah, it's a nice thing. It's a feel-good story. I was surprised to see that the ratings are doing so well. And, you know, I don't know. I'm sure you realize this, but this is the first World Series that you have two one-and-done playoff teams in. You know, both these teams won that wild card one-and-done, and they both made it to the play to the World Series, you know. So I guess Bud Selig's looking pretty good. Bud Selig thing where, you know, the regular season has become almost, you know, you finish on top in the regular season. It doesn't mean anything. Like hockey. Doesn't mean anything, you know. You just finish second, you can win the whole thing. Right. I mean, what? What? A couple of years ago, the Cardinals were. They had, I think, the fifteenth best regular season record in, in the majors. Fifteenth, and they won the World Series. Yes. So. Yes. You know, one of the columns I read that you you done many years ago, I thought was about you know, and Adrian Peterson ended up fitting right in there about you know, I think six kids, six different parents, six different mothers. Well, or I got six killed. I got killed last October. It was a year ago. I, Wrote a column after his uh, son he never knew uh, died. Yeah. Death. Imagine that his, he already lost his son, having beaten been beaten, beaten to death by the, the stepfather. And meanwhile, he goes home, beats his kid, or allegedly beats his kids into a into a uh, pulp. And then comes to court. He didn't he break? He had he was on bond oh, or no, something. And he was pot right before court. Come on, Larry. You, I know you you've know. been in court quite a bit. And I know you like <laughs> toke up every time you, you're there. <laughs> yeah. That's a very good point. Was that you taking photos yeah. uh, before I went to was court? That you? <laughs> no, but, hey, right. I was in court recently. <laughs> right, he's smoking um, weed before he goes into court. Yeah, no, I was I was in court recently, and the the, the, the case before me was I, I don't want to tell you, my case was dismissed. It was um, I, what happened was someone stole my congressional medal of honor, and I no, I don't. <laughs> My, um, I was in court, and there was a guy, a young man, not a kid, young man about 30, and he was facing his third DWI. Only three? Now, he, he, 
It was all, pardon me? Only three? It was a third, which means he hadn't been caught the other 40 times. Right. And and he was he was in court with a T-shirt on, and the front of the T-shirt read Coors Light. Nice. And I'm saying, How, what are you thinking about? Put on, you know, just go out, go steal a nice shirt. What did the back of the shirt say? in front say? of a judge with a Coors Light shirt on and your third D- 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 DWI. What did the, Phil, what did the back of the shirt say? <laughs> I, 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 I didn't look well and they didn't strike me you're probably right anyway, it didn't strike you anyway we, uh, we shared a cell and uh, <laughs> shared a cell you know smoked some weed together and then you guys got out oh we smoked weed on the way in on the way oh I'm sorry sorry about that <laughs> but last year at this time when, when I when I wrote that you know we, after Peterson's son and everyone was grieving for him and saying, oh, how can he play? And of course he did play. And I wrote, we got it all backward. We should be grieving for this child who never had a shot because his father didn't give a rat's tail about him, the MVP of the NFL. He barely knew he existed. Right. Then he went through, through Adrian Peterson's history, his criminal history. His history, is, uh, back then, it seemed he only had four kids. Now, after the, that kid's death, it seemed he had seven, six remaining from all different. And and I got cut up, and I, I, I you know, people were using the term baby mama, which I despise. Oh, like, I don't like it either. Yeah. It trivializes motherhood, fatherhood, parenthood, childhood. It just makes a cartoon out of it, and it's ugly. And, and I wrote it. And, uh... And I wrote that I couldn't, you know, if my kid had just been killed, murdered, it would have knocked the wind out of me. I couldn't have played football. I couldn't walk. I'd be on my knees. And, but, you know, everyone's saying how courageous he is, and I'm writing. I don't think maybe this guy gives a rat's tail. I agree with you. What is so courageous and, oh, about I that? I killed. Like, I'm a racist. Well, how dare you? You should go look it up now on, on Google up Mushnick on Adrian Peters. You'll see shit spin and, and awful and that and all these people what a piece of garbage is mushing against the most racist now it turns out that Adrian Peterson Peter was even worse than we imagined and <laughs> one of these people have come back and said you know I mean I was defamed my kids were hearing about it I don't I, you know I'm a tough guy I, I take my shots I expect my shots but but, but you know he calls someone a racist based on your your brief opinion over one column you write, that stuff sticks. You can't walk away from that. Yeah, that's when a tough stick. You can't walk around. Your kids, your kids, your, your friends, your father, and, and my kids, it was, you couldn't say anything. You couldn't even call a woman a chick in my house, let alone racist stuff. Yeah, that's and, a tough um, one. Yeah, it's not right. And, and you know, and, oh, but, you know, it's okay. It passes. It can't get over it. None of those people came, it was just like the, the Duke lacrosse thing, where everybody lined up to bash those kids, those rich white kids from the suburb, <laughs> when the story, and I wrote it, it made no sense. The accuser had a police record. Her ex-boyfriend said she had no credibility. She was a stripper, for God's sake, with making a, a private house call. What kind of person? And everybody who wrote, I mean, you know, the NAACP, they all came down and they, they went down on these, they, they, they got down on these kids and everything. Who came back and said we were wrong? None of them. None of them. So if I run out of time, are we still on the air? Are you still we're wait? still, we're still, still we're, Well, there's so much it's for you and I, there's so much for you and I to talk about, but one last thing I got to get to, and you got to come back on because it's been too long, but I love like you, you watch the UCLA Bruins, which is the powder blue uniform, but all of a sudden they got a black uniform, or you watch Syracuse, yeah, they're the orange men, where's the orange uniform? They got a black uniform. I mean, well, what is that? And it was the St. John's Red Storm, the, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, the Duke. Blue Devils. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> They're doing what Nike tells them to do. Exactly and right. The presidents look the other way because it's money in the pockets. It's all about the money. And, and none of this happens by accident. And a lot of these coaches know that uh, these kids are, uh, they choose schools not based on anything academic or anything traditional, but based on the color of the uniforms. Now, what does that tell you? What does it tell me? It doesn't tell us anything good. Phil Munchnick, I, I, we got to go, but you got to come back on. I can't wait four or five months for you to come back on. There's so much for us to talk I'm about. I'm to start pestering.
pestering me. Yeah, pestering is the right word. I told him he's got to pester you to get you to get back on here. Good man, that Andy. Yes, he is. Phil Munchnik, the great writer from New York Post. Thanks for calling in, buddy. And he will be right, pestering brother, thank you. you. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh, Phil Munchnik, let me tell you something. You could keep going and going and going, but I see my guys over there in the booth telling me the show is over. Larry Davis, Sports Biz with LD, sponsored by Rampart Insurance Group for all your insurance needs. A1 VIP Entertainment for all your tickets and backstage passes. And also, 388 Restaurant and Lounge, 388 Willis Avenue in Roslyn, New York, and Easy Porn. You got something, you want to pawn it, they got the money. 14 locations throughout New York City. I'm Larry Davis, and this is Sports Biz with LD.